All right, I want to have a little fun today. So uh, I get this question from time to time. It basically asks me, how do you go about prepping your car for dyno? A dyno session is really the best way you can go to get your car dialed in and get everything taken care of uh, so that you can tune it out correctly. Now, there are some things you can do. A dyno is a tool. That means you can gather a lot of this information on your own. So here, I've got my computer pulled up. I'll go ahead and copy the screen and put it as kind of a, a bottom section. I was just doing some auto-tune on the way home, having a little bit of fun. And I thought, hey, why don't I share some of the things that I'm playing around with? So, in this case, uh, one thing to keep in mind is the dyno is essentially recording the change in speed that it's happening and how that force is being applied. So it's, there's a lot more that goes into it. It's oversimplified. I know I'll probably get a more detailed answer later, but that's essentially what's going on. So one way you can do this with Megasquirt and with Speedwino or anything that's taking data logs is a lot of times you go back and review those data logs, you have the ability to show up RPM per second. So if you take that RPM per second and you can start comparing it to different data logs. So uh, what I'm planning on doing and what I've done in the past is I take my spark table and I start to adjust it little by little the whole time while I'm running on a consistent road, a consistent gas, and uh, I just go back and compare the different runs against each other. Now you get better results or more, I guess, easy to interpret results um, the higher the gear that you use. Now I'm just gonna do this as an example case. I'm I'm going to keep it in first gear only just because I hate freeway driving. I just decided to kind of spontaneously do this on my drive home. Don't really want to jump on the freeway very much. But uh, here on the screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tuning and I'll go to, I'll just reset this for now, but I'll go to tuning and I'll go to my spark table. And here's some of the spark table. I played around with it just a moment ago and I kind of lowered it down. The idea behind this is uh, a couple of things you want to take it and just kind of gradually increase it little by little and play around with it. I'm in a high altitude with a cam that's pretty far advanced, so it's a little bit of a different spark timing table than you would expect. Now, as you're doing this, and if this is something that you're willing to do is tune it out a little bit before you take it to a dyno shop, and then you let the dyno shop really go in there and fine tune things and make it better, that's where you get your best bang for the buck. But be prepared to go through and do this at different boost levels. So in my case, um, yesterday I went in and I, well today I went in there and I turned off my boost controller. So I'm running at wastegate right now. When I originally did this, I ran it as open wastegate. I went in there and I disconnected the wastegate and just propped it open, essentially had it like an NA motor. So it was running through, but it wasn't over spinning the turbo or anything crazy like that. And it's just behaving fine. I tuned out the spark table there. Then I added the wastegate back in. I tuned out there. And then I started bumping up the boost and turning at each level. And so essentially, I got this at the lowest level. A um, couple of warnings I'll throw in there if you're planning on doing this. Be consistent in the gas. If you're going to run premium as you tune, you better run premium as you drive. Don't switch to mid-grade or do something like that. If you're gonna tune on mid-grade, you're fine to go to premium gas and run it there, but vice versa is bad. You're you're gonna detonate if you do crap like that. So be aware of that. Don't think do anything silly there. So let's have some fun. Let's give it a couple little runs. I'll show you what she looks like. Man, where'd all this traffic come from? All right, here's a break. I'm just gonna give it a quick little rip in first gear. There's a quick little rip in first gear. Didn't blow speed limits. Did nothing along those lines. So we're good there. I'm going to pull over up here. I'm going to adjust that timing again. Pull over one more toward kind of this lot. So we went through, we ripped that quickly. You kind of saw it there. I'm going to do the same thing. 
I'm just going to come here to my spark table and I already know that it's kind of because I'm on the wastegate I'm a high altitude uh, it's going to be in this range so I'm going to take it and I'm going to increase it just for fun I'm going to increase it maybe one or two okay so we'll have a good comparison run normally I'd only recommend one I already know what it's going to do but we'll start behaving and comparing it. So I'll just give it two rips and we can kind of compare what it's doing. So the same thing. Just like that, we rip through it. She's good to go. So, I pulled over, I've been able to go ahead and kind of look at the data logs now. And this is kind of what I want to show you. So I've got basically two simple things. So up here at the top, I just want to see the basics of what I'm dealing with. Down here at the bottom though, this is the fun one. So I've got advanced, so you got that down here. So you can see there I'm running about 27 degrees advanced, which I was playing around with there. And then I've got my RPMs per second. So you got those kind of bouncing around. As I move around, you can see they kind of jump all over the place. but you know, I can average that out and kind of figure where I would be and what happened there. The other thing is I can compare this to older data logs. My other data log didn't turn out very well, but the higher gear you are, the less of this bounciness that you'll usually see. Uh, the higher gear ratios as you're in there, it starts to smooth it out and you start seeing less jumpiness. So always better to do it in a higher gear ratio. But then what you're able to do is kind of pull up your data logs, compare the two, start finding out where things are couple of things I want to call out. So just because you made more power at, uh, let's say, 27 degrees advance and very little boost doesn't necessarily mean that's where you need to be. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a generic picture of a bell curve. And so what happens is you're running very low timing. You've got very low power. And then there's kind of this sweet spot where you get in there and you start hitting boost and everything's happy. But keep in mind, the more and more timing you add, the more and more heat you add as well. And so as you get closer and closer to this area where it's peak power, you're also adding more and more heat. So yes, if you're running under perfect conditions, you can get away with this without doing detonation. But if you're right there at the peak and it's a little bit hotter than normal day and your cooling system isn't up to it, you're going to detonate there. So a lot of times as I'm going up, I see this strapid kind of curve right here, but why is it starts to mellow out? That's where I stop and say, okay, enough with ignition timing. I'm not going to push it anymore. And this is where I'm going to set it. And then I'm going to make sure that my knock protection, and everything else is good to go. I'm still working on knock right now for those that are wondering, but I'm going to make sure that that's set up and good to go there. And I'll go to the dyno and let them tune it the rest of the way closer to here. More often than not, I see them just shy of it. So as I start to do it, Let's say they run uh, 27 degrees advance and they find out it's no different at 28 degrees. Well, that means I'm right here in this area. They're going to set it at 27 and not 28 because I'm less likely to detonate. I'm less likely to have issues. So if you ever go up one degree or half degree or point of degree and you've seen absolutely no change in how it's happening, that's bad news. That means you're right there at the top of the point and you need to back it off immediately. Again, these are just what I do. Don't take this as the absolute Bible. Use your common sense and know what you're doing in a sense and understand what you're doing so you don't blow up your engine. Um, but in this case, as it gets closer and closer, you know, you're, you're not going to accelerate. But if I add a degree of timing in this area, it's going to make a huge difference. And this is just a generic bell curve. So it's not like exactly. But that's kind of what to expect. This one actually probably looks a little more Correct. So as you get up there closer, it starts to mellow out a little bit more. So as you're adding more timing, not much happens. That's essentially what we're seeing. If you go past this point, you'll start seeing detonation, you'll drop power. So if you ever add timing and you notice you had less power than the run before, back the timing up. That or you have a different factor, whether it's something else changed, heat, uh, curve of the road, anything and everything like that. Just kind of keep those in mind and play around with them. But really, you should see something along these lines. This is a little jumpier, but uh, you can kind of even see these jumps in there. And there's a reason for this, and that's something that's going to be in the next video. It has to do with testing that I'm doing versus uh, map sampling. And so that's kind of how that's coming in there. So more cool things to follow there. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense.
By the way, some of you noticed I park a little funny in my garage. This is why. Because I love my wife and she wants the garage too. And my toys can't have and she parked in the middle of the garage. Okay. Well, that happened. Well, normally I squeeze in there, but that's not going to be possible today. I just, uh, every morning, if I take the dots and I pull the bike out of the way and uh, move it that way. But that's not happening today. Well, still love my wife. As you can see here, I park pretty much squeezed right against the wall. I barely missed the press right there with the back tire. As you can see, and the front tire is probably like a finger's width away from the wall. I you can see right here on the front of the bumper, I'm really close to my lawn mowing edger equipment, all that stuff. And then when everything's said and done, I just go ahead and grab the bike and I slide it behind the Datsun. So every morning as I get up, I go ahead and pull out this motorcycle out of the way and park it behind the van, back up the Datsun, e-brake it, slide the bike back behind it, park it and call it good. So, compromise. I get to keep the car. I get to park like an idiot. It's really fun, but hey, better than not having a fun toy. So, uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. You guys have a great one.